Hello, everybody. My name is Adam Edwards. I'm joined with Amanda Goff today. We are going to be talking about getting organized as an unorganized person. I am very unorganized. Amanda, you seem to be very organized and you specialize in this. Uh, you, I do, yeah. to a degree. Because <laughs> I've been very or- disorganized in the past. Cool. Okay. That's what was the, one of the questions I was, I was going to ask. So that's good. Uh, yeah, this came through. Uh, I've been, I was writing down some uh, content topics uh, back in the day, and this is one of the things that I thought would be good. For, uh, you know, I, so I would want to listen to back in the day, and especially now. And um, I posted, we are in a class together, and you answered up, said you'd love to join, and we'll have talks about this. And yeah, so this is going to be fun. I think we're going to do this like a two part series. I don't know for sure yet. Uh, there was one other person that kind of answered up with this. And um, I don't know, I just want to get as many people involved with this kind of thing. And I think it'd be kind of fun. So, with that, uh, Amanda, you are with Silver Keys Media. Is that right? How yes, long have you been doing that? Yeah, so I have had my company for over seven years now, and I basically started it because I was being asked to do so much kind of freelance work. I'm like, well, I should probably be legit <laughs> and <laughs> and opened a company, and just that's when that started the dream of, oh, I can be my own boss, and, and I worked full-time in tandem with building my business for several years, um, actually up until 2017. So I um, was able after the end of 2017 to step into my business full time. And um, in addition to brand strategy, brand um, foundation, I also am a a photographer and a videographer. So I started initially with that focus, but became very apparent um, that many of my clients had no idea of who they wanted to market to and had no real foundation to their brand story and message. So that's kind of where I um, created some some programs that could help with that. Very good. Yeah, that's that's actually, we see that uh, as well. It's a very common thing, I think, and something that I'm even guilty of, of yeah, right. you know, start a business and I don't really know what I'm going to do, but I have an idea of how to do it. So, um, yeah, I think that's, especially the class that we're in, that's helped me a lot in understanding, you know, that, that marketing to, you need to figure out who you're, who you're talking to and how to talk to them. And, you know, I think a lot of us kind of jump into things because we understand how to do it, but we don't understand, you know, the rest of it. (laughs) Yeah. We're good at what we do. Like we, we have a passion for solving a problem. But then it comes down to, and and I have a background in marketing as well, because um, (laughs) when I got out of school, I went to school and I got a degree in broadcast communications and I had been interning at a film and TV production company. And that's where I thought I was going. Well, I moved, had no connections. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I went into marketing. Uh, So I've worked for several small businesses and I learned I mean, I knew enough about marketing, but I learned in the trenches about, about marketing. And that's really where I would ask questions like, well, what is, who are we talking, you know, who is this for? And I would just start asking the questions and that's where, yeah, people, Mm -hmm. so many people start their business. So really I was, when I even started my company, I was kind of like my first best client because (laughs) I had to start (laughs) going through all the process of like, Oh yeah, who do I want to attract, and who do I want to work with? <laughs> I it's don't a, know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good way of, of putting it. That you know, that you were your first best client because you got to understand it before you can really put it out there. You know, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's well, and it you know coming down to our topic of organization, that was really key for. Well, I was start, especially when I was talking to other people about this. I'm like, oh, I need to get all this put together in a place where I know where I can find the information and and not have to spend time and waste time basically um, when I'm creating or marketing or, or whatever I was doing. So uh, that's something that's really important about my program is that organizational piece because if you don't know where all your stuff is, then you waste time. Like, 
oh, where is that folder? <laughs> where is that thing? Right. Especially if you hire a designer or you hire and leverage out parts of your marketing or you hire a VA, mm -hmm. like they have to know how to represent your business. <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah you gotta, need to know where it's at. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> that's, that's a very good point. So uh, going back, you didn't start out as an organized person, right? No. Um, I, I've always loved systems and or being organized. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I have a, I'm a high creative. And so that part of me really ran my life. I know. Hello, raise your hand. <laughs> Creatives anonymous <laughs> or not so anonymous. Cause we don't like to be anonymous. <laughs> um, um, I just, that creative side ran amok and while well, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> yeah. it's um, yeah, it, you don't get very far and that's when I started realizing I needed to figure out how to get organized. So I've, I've looked, you know, to others that were, that was their, their magic superpower and learned. Um, but I will say probably the biggest thing that taught me to be organized was I stepped into a role at the local theater company where I am. And I worked with them quite intensely for several years. Hmm. Um, and I stepped into a role as um, basically directors of operations. Well, all of a sudden I was <laughs> director of operations for all these creatives, me mm. being one of them, right. and realized that if we were going to get anything done, we had to know what we were doing and have a plan. <laughs> Somebody had to fulfill this role to... Right? <laughs> right. So that's really where I think I cut my teeth in like, okay, Creatives can be organized mm -hmm. if they are shown how right. and given expectations and given the tools. Right. So it, it's it's really having that strong toolbox, at least for me. Um, and that was really helpful because when I started actually stepping into role as like a director, mm -hmm. then I had the tools. Because yeah. I definitely worked, <laughs> I've worked as an actor for some directors. You're just like, what are we doing and when and how? And it's a little scary. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to avoid that. So I will say that everything I learned about organization, I learned in the theater. <laughs> That's huge. That's great. Actually, I love that. Actually makes me feel even better because like we were just talking about before we started recording, I'm getting involved in theater. And so as a creative, it's almost like being a creative is almost anti-organization <laughs> because you're trying to just be inspired. And yeah. inspiration doesn't come from any one place. It's just kind of all over the place. And yeah, I think it may be like we, that's how we kind of get in a habit of living is we kind of like, I nest. I don't know if you nest or if anybody here nests, I nest. So um, what I mean by nesting is I have 20 things in this corner. They're little, they're nice and tidy. I know exactly what everything is, but it looks like crap. It looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and over here yeah. I have things that are work related and, so it's like an organized chaos, but from the outside, yep. it looks awful. Uh, exactly. <laughs> right. So being involved in theater and fulfilling a role of director and director of operations, you see that's, you're kind of like shoved into a position where you have to figure it out to thrive. I did. Because <laughs> you, you want to perform and you want to be able to do it correctly. And that's something that definitely pushes you to do it, you know? So I can see like getting, getting out of that, um, comfortable little creative zone that we get in and putting yourself into something that isn't comfortable. Maybe that's yeah. something that's a great jump start to getting organized. Maybe <laughs> it is. It's well, it's also, it's, it's also for me, it was okay. Being responsible for other people. <laughs> right. When you're just responsible for yourself, eh, you know, you can kind of just like, make it happen, whatever, right. stay up till two in the morning. If something didn't get done, cause you forgot about it, whatever. Right. <laughs> but when you're responsible for like bringing other people through a process and leading, um, you know, as a director, you know, you're, they're looking to you for like direction. <laughs> That's the whole yeah. point. Right. But in addition to that, you know, you're also, at least in my experience, 
I was directing all of my designers Mm -hmm. and I was directing all of the tech crew. Um, So I do always go back to saying I, if (laughs) I learned everything I'm doing in business from theater, because you're kind of like the director of your business and eventually, so you have to know what's going on so you can, you know, your actors are the people you're working with and you've got your designers, you've got your people behind the scenes and you have to, if, if you don't know where you're going and how you want to get there and the story you want to tell, because mm-hmm. you're telling a story, yeah. then it's not going to go well. <laughs> yeah, that's very good point. And it's so funny that this is what we're talking about right now, because the very first uh, podcast show that we did, mm-hmm. we had, the director of the, the theater that I was just telling you about had her on. And we, the biggest topic we're talking about is if you want to get involved in this type of stuff, marketing, content creation, theater is the best place to do it. So now it's kind of coming back full circle of, you know, personality wise and kind of branching out, go to theater and just break out of your shell. And now yeah. it's also like, we're talking about, it'll help you get organized. Like it'll help you level up and, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So this is this makes me happy. I think. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> but it's really great. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so if nothing else, everybody get involved with your theater. <laughs> right. And you theater. don't have to be on stage. You can do stuff behind the scenes. You can usher. You can do anything. <laughs> it, they always need help. <laughs> There's lots of stuff. <laughs> So I grew up and I've already admitted I'm not an organized person, but I have spurts of organization. So I have like, I don't know if it's like my ADD thing or what's going on, but every now and then, you know, I'll have my yellow legal pad here. And whenever I'm feeling like that, like I, I, like I need, like I understand, like I need that structure. I need to get organized because things kind of too chaos right now. Um, I fall in that habit of like, I'll write everything down take notes, get my desk super nice. Everything's good and organized. And then like a week later, it's kind of like, okay, let me nest again and like get everything back and fall back into that habit and go back into that chaos. And I think maybe that a lot of people experience that. Yeah. Uh, do you think maybe that's something like, um, finding our comfort area and kind of just keep kind of referring back to it? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, it comes back to if you really, it comes back to a system or a process Mm -hmm. and the class that we're in, I'm really excited because one of the things I'm going to be implementing in the new year is, is a thing called star tasks. And, and that's going to be something that I'm going to have, you know, a short period of time in the morning and then one day a week where I am dedicating to that. And it's a habit I'm going to have to create in Mm -hmm. myself and my schedule, but it's those, it's those habits and it doesn't have to be, you know, for the non create non um, organized, it doesn't have to be, Oh, I have to spend two hours doing this thing. Um, Mm -hmm. I've learned I, as a antsy creative, Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of, kind of call myself a creative weirdo because I do think in a very highly organized manner. And if you give me a task and you want me to organize a list or a shot list or a, you know, whatever it is, I'm very right. good and, and we'll dive deep into the details. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and people go, wow, that's even like my proposals for things. People are like, oh, wow, this is really highly detailed. And it's, selfishly because I want to make sure I put down everything so right. there's the expectations are set right. right but um it you know that has helped me but I use that as a template so I think these systems they don't have to take long you just have to put chunks of time at it so I like to even around the house um if I have a project okay I'm gonna spend you know set the clock for 30 sec 30 seconds 30. 30- 30 seconds would be quite great. (laughs) great. If I can get a ton done, Um, like 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. 15 minutes, whatever it is, and dedicate that time. And then, you know, I've at least accomplished something. 
Right, and yeah. I also feel like, okay, 30 minutes is doable or an hour. You know, some people need that hour to really get into the zone of something. Right. But on an average, most people, you can't spend a ton of time. By the time your brain hits a certain wall, like you have to move on to something different. And I think that's part of the reason people get off of just, you know, into disorganization because they're expecting their brain to be able to do something at a much, you know, more in-depth way. Right. And it's like, take it in chunks. Hmm. And you don't have to organize everything all at once. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's that's a good point too. Is like you can't get everything done in an hour. And you know, like you you have to chunk it out, like you're saying. And yeah, the what you're talking about, the star tasks. Um, I think we're we're actually in the same boat with that. And um I see that as um a very good way to hold yourself accountable. Yeah. Uh, I love spreadsheets and that's when my, yeah, yeah there you go. So <laughs> I think uh, that's when that organization really kicks in because it's for somebody else. You're doing yes. something that right. is somebody else's eyes and you want it to be like perfect. And so we put a lot of organization and detail into the things that we, you know, push forward. Um, but yeah, it kind of goes back to like when it's for ourselves, like we can kind of, we feel like we can kind of slack. Um, but being an entrepreneur, you don't, you can't really do that anymore. Right. So having those star tasks, you know, like 15, 30 minutes, 45 minutes every morning, you need to do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. And it, it's in order to grow your business. And yeah. um, I think something that, um, were you there for Michael Burnoff's uh, presentation with Molly? Yeah. Okay. I, I got his book uh, last week. And started reading it. It's actually really, really good. Um, I really appreciate his. He talks about your your mindset and kind of self analyzing your own mindset. It's not a competition of like you compared to the next person. Uh, his book is called Average Sucks, and he goes into a lot of de detail about it. what is average. Ultimately, it's your norm. You know, it's your status quo of what you know what you are right now. And it's he said the best thing you can do is analyze where you are at in yourself, not compared to your neighbor, not compared to somebody that you look up to. It's just who you are right now and who you want to be and okay. going mentally. And you can mentally identify as like right now I can say I am an organized person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell myself that every morning I am an organized person keep doing it. It's going to happen. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's learning where you, what your threshold is. I think that's really what it comes down to organization is learning the threshold. Where do you need to create habits where, you know, how long can you spend on the task mm -hmm. and be realistic with it? And, right. and it's okay. It's, you know, especially on the creative side most of us have some ADHD if even if it's I'm not diagnosed but it, I right. totally know I am right. um, and it's kind of there's a magic power in it because it actually as disorganized people usually what I feel most disorganized people if you if you come across them it's usually because their brain is kind of functioning on like Yes, we have those little squirrel moments, but there's a lot going on. My my husband calls it spaghetti brain for me because I can have one thought and then it's like loops all the way down to this over thought over here, <laughs> the spaghetti yeah. noodle, the end of the spaghetti noodle. And yeah. he's like, how did you think of like, where did that come from? I'm like, well, you said this and I thought of that and I thought of this. <laughs> right. And I think that's, a, I, I don't know for sure. Because mm -hmm. I'd be interesting to see what the science is for those that are disorganized. Mm -hmm. Are they more creative? And is that how their brain is more functioning? And there's a magic power in that because often we're thinking on a very different level. It's just harnessing that. Yes. And, and being able to say, okay, I need, and, and giving ourselves time to be disorganized in our thought or disorganized in our life or spontaneous or whatever that means. Right, yeah. Um so you know, like for me with marketing and my 
my, the things that I'm doing in my business. Um, that's why I go, okay, I'm going to spend an hour planning all the themes and topics I'm going to talk about mm-hmm. for the next year. And people go, oh, that's a lot, but it's not because what I do is I talk about the same topic and theme for a whole month. There you go. It makes my life easier. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and typically in marketing, people need to hear something more than once. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if I cover it for a whole month in my group or my, you know, posts or blog or whatever, it's it's going to get seen and the touch points will be a little bit bigger reach. Yeah. Because, so I'm making my life easier by making it simpler. Right. So I only have to come up with 12 themes and topics. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's good. And it, only it, 12. <laughs> that, that repetition sticks, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, and then I'm huge. And I know this is something in the class we're in with Molly. And she's a huge fan of is repurposing. Yeah. Same thing. Right. Once you actually create a, a system like that, Yes, you have to mix it up a little. Like you don't want to completely repeat everything, <laughs> but you don't have to completely reinvent reinvent it either. Yeah, so, it, you can't. You know, when you do this every day of the year, and you're on your fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth year, come on, like you, there's this. You got to recycle some stuff. You got to revisit. Things. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Yes. There's so much out there. No one who saw, even if they saw it and remembered it from last year, they're not going to be like, wait a second. They posted that before. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I've seen that video. Actually, (laughs) I actually like it when I see repeats of things. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Right. Yeah. It's a refresher. (laughs) Right. Everybody's sitting there looking like you wore that shirt last week. I go, come on. (laughs) I know. I guess if people are paying that close attention, then I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. They're, they're, those people are not my my ideal tribe. So <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And that's another good point is when you are putting yourself out there, especially as an op- entrepreneur, um, it's not your job to please everybody. No. You know, there's going to be people that don't vibe with you that aren't part of your tribe, like you say. And that's a very important thing to be able to disassociate from in a way. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right word. It's kind of harsh, but um, just understanding that not everybody is for everybody. Yeah. And the sooner you can actually go out and be yourself, the sooner you're going to find your ideal people, you know? Absolutely. I mean, and I think that's where, when you do get to a space where you are organizing yourself to authentically show up, Right, right. And be able to step into whatever you're doing, then you're going to naturally attract, you know, like attracts like. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it in my business. I've seen it in my clients' businesses, in those that I've, you know, um, I talk a lot about ideal client because as a brand foundation, it's huge and identifying them. Mm -hmm. And the authenticity, I also call it, you know, what's you know makes you unique your awesome sauce i like to dub it your awesome sauce because it's everything about who you are that's why people show up Mm. and you know part of my awesome sauce is um i'm a creatively disorganized weirdo that's organized (laughs) (laughs) so people people are attracted to me because they're like i'm creative and highly disorganized please help (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it's great because I'm like, I know how your brain works. Mm-hmm. Come on, let's let's help you get the tools you need so mm-hmm. that you can start being a creative weirdo like me. <laughs> right. You have the key, you found it. <laughs> yeah, right. Or right. at least a key <laughs> if it works right. for me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about being organized as an organized unorganized person in yeah. work versus life. Yeah. You know, what's um, kind of like we were kind of hitting on of like being that creative when we have a task for somebody, we can knock it out and be super structured. Like we might as well be completely left brained when it comes to that. Yeah. But when it comes to life, how does that impact? Because is like, I think maybe you need that continuity, you know, that consistency. If you're going to be organized and work, 
you know, what happens when you come home and your life is unorganized? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's huge because I think when I'm, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I know for me, if I come home and my, I can have my creative the organized, disorganized, chaotic messes that, you know, kind of looks like a mess, but it's organized. Right, right. Um, but if I come home and everything is everywhere, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I'm like, ah, I, to me, it's stressful. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, if I'm not sure what's, what's for dinner or what's this or what's mm -hmm. that, it's stressful. So mm -hmm. I've, I actually have learned that, um, as much as I am repellent of routine, mm -hmm. um, what I've done is, is I have people in my, I've put in my life to hold me accountable. And mm -hmm. I've learned that I have to, sometimes that's paying people <laughs> to yeah. hold me accountable. Uh, sometimes that, you know, like, that's like, if you have a personal trainer, mm -hmm. um, I actually have a program. I probably will be joining after the first year with one of my, um, health practitioners I work with. Um, and I'm like, well, okay. Yep. It's money out the door, but I will actually do it because someone is expecting me to do it and people pay to pay attention. Right. Yep. Um, I have a really good friend that we we've been walking actually for three years now and we are holding each other accountable to get up. And part of that is I do that because then I actually get up early <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas I won't get up as early <laughs> yeah, yeah. if I don't have someone waiting for me to meet me right. and go do something. So I definitely still have pockets of like, ah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but it's finding it. And again, I go back to, um, I have a, what I call a magic rule of three. You can only identify three things and accomplish three things in a day, in a week, in a month, whatever it is, whatever mm -hmm. time frame. Obviously, the, the month goal, three things could be bigger that you break down into smaller tasks to get it done right. or, you know, quarterly, annually. Uh, but there's there's that magic in three. Three you can look at and go, I can do this. Can do you start piling on which i am notorious for like lists a mile long right. um you go uh i don't i can't uh, uh, i don't okay i and then you don't you freeze you yeah. just bury your head mm -hmm. so one of the habits that i've been working to really make a part of my day is okay what are the top three things i have to get done and and it can be in business and it can be in life so you could maybe make two lists the mm -hmm. top three things in life the top three things in business yeah that's six but they're different categories yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> so it's um one of those things that you can look at that and go okay i can get these three things done yeah i can do it you know, so <laughs> that's my advice, at least with life is don't try and do it all. Mm -hmm. You're not going to eat the elephant in one bite. Right. <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> um, you'll choke and die. Uh, <laughs> um, so break it up and be be OK with you're going to be OK with the process yeah. as you get organized. Right. And that's something that I think maybe what stops a lot of people is you, we want to do it and just be done with it. And yeah. I think organization mm -hmm. and things like that, it's never done. It, it, no. never ends. it, it There's not a final finish line that you cross and now I can just kind of like relax. That's what vacation's for, but then that creates more chaos. But right. <laughs> um, yeah, is that, I guess, changing your mindset of this is a constant thing. And how do I make that fun? And how do I make that something that's enjoyable? Um, one of the things that are in the book from Michael Bernoff, he's saying is, even if it's something you don't enjoy doing, if you repeat it and keep doing it, your brain finds a way to inject that happy chemical doing it. Yeah. So I remember I can reference back when I was working out, I committed myself to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, go out in my backyard 
and do the Tabata HI hitch, uh, high intensity interval training. Yeah. I did it for three weeks. I hated it, but I was like, I'm going to stick to it because I was way overweight and I was like, I just nothing better to do. So I'm going to go do it. Yeah. And actually got into the habit that if I miss a Wednesday because I was working, I felt like, I, I, I this sucks. Like I want to go work out. Like what the heck? <laughs> like it, yeah. I wanted to go do it. It's just because of that repetition, you know? So I can see like that's the same kind of thing with this. You got to get over that hump. You got to get over that one week of like doing really good and then like push past that um, uh, the 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 cycle of going back into your comfort zone, going back into Absolutely. your box, you know. Yeah. yeah, and and it's something that you know. I always strive to be a little uncomfortable. <laughs> with projects or a little uncomfortable with, with something I'm um, wanting to tackle mm -hmm. or, you know, it was like when I directed my first show, I was like, okay. I mean, I had, I had it. I knew what I was, I was doing, but I didn't know what I was doing. You know, it was, it's right. scary. Yeah. Or I'm like, I have a current project I'm working on right now that it's a big project mm -hmm. and you kind of go, okay. You know, that self-doubt fit kicks in. Well, it's good because it's forcing me to be more organized. It's forcing me to be more on track. And I think really it comes down to, um, yeah, giving yourself that grace, mm -hmm. but also saying, no, I, this is, I, I'm committing to this. Um, yeah. One of the big things that helped me too is, is having either a group of people that you want to declare it to or <laughs> right. state it to whatever that is. I tell people about things and people kind of go, Oh, wow. Okay. That's interesting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, cause if I don't tell you, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I won't do it. <laughs> and so I have to declare it. Right. I like that. Yeah, I like that. One thing I want to kind of touch back on and I really like that you brought up was having that uh, accountability partner. Mm -hmm. A friend that is not a yes person. Yes. Uh, that's actually one of the topics I wrote down for for these these webinars and stuff. I was like, find your support group yeah. that doesn't tell you what you want to hear. Tell them some somebody that will be uh, frank, be very truthful and honest with you. Because if you surround yourself with people that just enable you and sell you, oh yeah, you're fine. It looks great. You know, you're doing this. They're not challenging you yeah. to push forward and like you were just saying like making yourself uncomfortable is a good thing you know it's it is it, yeah it means you're progressing in something and our brains want to be i don't know like they want to stay in this box like uh, there's something in about it, a lot of people's brains it's like stay where you are like just be <laughs> blank like we just want to ride and if you do that you're not going to go anywhere well, you know, you know, the, the map, you right. know, the <laughs> expectations, you know, you, you know, even people who are like, oh no, I like change and I like this. It's fine. But the, you still, people like consistency. I mean, that's just human nature yeah. and consistency can be good and consistency can be bad. You're, if you're consistent and comfortable in bad habits they're just gonna stay there yeah. so yeah absolutely it's like push yourself a little right yeah remap the brain <laughs> remap the brain yeah and everybody can do it and it's something that if you're watching this right now and you're like oh i you know i i, I don't do that you know I, i'm not that kind of person to go out there and do that let me tell you uh like we were talking about before we recording i grew up and for 34 years of my life i was introverted I don't want to be in front of people. I don't want to be in big groups. I don't like it. It's not me. And I like being in a dark corner, watching movies, like leave me alone. And starting this business, initially, I was going to be the guy behind the computer. You know, that's like my best friend that we started the business together. He's like, dude, this is going to be perfect for you. You can just stay in your dark office. You can be behind the computer. You don't have to talk to anybody. I just need you to do the computer stuff. I'm like, hey, that's great. I like that. You know, I spent seven years as a graphic designer that was my comfort zone behind the computer away from people and really quick we found out that that doesn't work you know if um 
we're going to both come in and make this work. We both have to show up and shake hands and talk to people and go to mixers, go to these events. And it took uh, a few months for me to break out. And it was a lot of like, it was an accountability, accountability partner. If I didn't have my buddy John going out and doing it, I wouldn't have gone because I was just like, if it was just me, I just kind of like try to figure out a way to make it work. But since I have that other half, that's like, Hey, let's go do this. Like we need to go out and do this. And we need to go present in front of a hundred people. Let's work up to that point. Um, just going out and doing it. You fail, you know, you go through times that you're going to crash and burn and it's going to suck, but yeah. Go out and do it again. Keep doing it because you're not going to get it right the first time. You're going to get it right the 20th, 30th time. Yeah. Well, you know? and you learn. I mean, you learn through mistakes. I mean, that's where I have learned so many, so many lessons in life and in business is you're like, oops, well, don't want to do that again. How do I'm, I not do that again? It's when you keep making the same mistakes. That's the problem. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, you just go, okay. That didn't work. What right. can I do to make it redirect it to do a little different? And yeah, exactly. Just get up and and I, I totally agree with you that having surrounding yourself with people that will be your will kick you in the butt, basically. And that you can also collaborate with in, you know, whether you're working with them as a business partner, a power partner. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I think um you know, like you and I could be really great power partners because <laughs> of what we do. And, you know, just having that relationship, mm -hmm. it, it embeds some accountability and it starts you on a path of surrounding yourself with people that can, you know, help. I mean, we're all out here as small businesses. We don't have to be alone. Yeah. We can do this together. Yeah. And collaboratively, like coming together, like for this podcast or coming together for a webinar or whatever, why right. not help each other out? Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's another huge thing that we talk about a lot on the podcast is <clears throat> it's not about competition. It didn't make sense to compete with somebody. I mean, no. you, it kind of goes back to that whole thing as an entrepreneur, it's not your job to appeal to everybody. So it's okay to have somebody doing the same thing. It's okay for you and I to have marketing agencies. And for us to kind of collab because you have your personality. I have my personality and we have our niches that we come down to and that we appeal to, you know, and I, yeah, I would much rather a collaborative relationship of a power partner because you've been through things that I've never been through and you have the key, like you're like, we're talking about, you have the key, like you went through this um, big transformation when you get through the theater of like, I can be organized and I understand it now. And yeah, now I know can, what it is. <laughs> hey, you can pass that on. And if we're sitting here button heads and like, oh, well, we're all for the same thing. We're never going to talk. Well, now, you know, there's no growth in that. You know? Yeah. 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 I mean, and that's huge for me is, you know, in addition to accountability is finding places to hang out groups, either virtually or, you mm -hmm. know, in person now that we're, at a space where people are more comfortable opening up and, mm -hmm. and, you know, having that interaction with people on a, on a regular basis. Right. And for me, that's huge because it's, it helps us know we're not alone. And I I always learn more in groups and that's why I have my own group on Facebook and trying to expand that to other, other platforms as well. Yeah. But that group dynamic like that's, that's where the magic happens. I, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, absolutely. Cause it's two minds better than one, you know, and our minds have a habit of really hard focusing on something. And if you're too close to a problem, yeah, you know, you're probably not going to come up with the best solution. So having that outside person or somebody else with a different perspective to come in, you can come up with something great and, you know, it's kind of thinking about, it. I don't know why this popped in my head, but thinking about like a movie script and mm -hmm. um, it starts out as one thing. Like I, 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 I'm still kind of am, but I used to be obsessed with Pixar and I watched a documentary about 
kind of like their process of mm-hmm. some of the movies they made. And they go through like, here's was our original idea. And it was so far off from the final product. It was bizarre. And you sit there and you're like, I can tell you that's a horrible idea. And these are professionals doing it that are making hundreds of thousands a year. And it was like, that's a terrible idea. But they take it and they go into their group and their think tank. Mm-hmm. And as a group, they hash it out and come up with this amazing product at the end. It takes a lot of work. But um, kind of thinking about that is be open to change with your yeah. what you're doing. Be open to listening to people and know that your first idea is probably not the best, but it can become something really, really good. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. I think that's pretty cool. So how do we relate that to the organization? I, I don't know. I got kind of go off on tangents. <laughs> <But> <laughs> well, no, I think, I think it comes back to, I mean, to be an organized person ha- takes intention. So you need to have the intention to be organized. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the intention to be organized, it's not going to happen, right? right. You got <laughs> and, you know, there's the baby steps. But having that aspect where you, like you said, that first idea or that first way mm-hmm. may not work. Mm-hmm. But sticking with it and, and finding groups, finding groups of people, finding accountability, finding whatever, knowing that, okay, you know, part of that too is goals. You know, if you want to be organized, you have to have goals to to reach, and and then that gives you the steps to get more organized, yeah, and more able to reach those goals. Right. And so, I think it does does relate in the sense that you have to realize it's a process. It's not oh, I'm going to snap my fingers and instantly be organized. Mm. No. It's a process and it takes time and it's, it's going to be a habit that you have to implement and it's going to be something that you have to realize where you have, where you have gaps and are those gaps. Okay. So, cause you know, you can keep some of your disorganization. That's okay. (laughs) You don't have to have it all (laughs) organized (laughs) to little, you know, compartments or whatever. Right. That that goes over the top a different way. So, <laughs> I see that. No, that, I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, makes me feel better. Of you don't have to be super organized in everything, but find where organization helps you the most and stick yeah. with it. You know, you know, have your organized chaos, <laughs> but do it in a way that is moving forward. And like I say, like my desk is a mess. You know, like, <laughs> today. But, you know, every now and then you kind of kick in and be like, okay, it's time to get this organized. <laughs> so it's kind of like yes. scrap and get it together and throw away the cell phone box that's been in my drawer for 10 years. Get rid of all <laughs> that, you know, like push forward and, you know, stick to something, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I went through a bin that had just been, oh, I just was dumping stuff in all the time. And I'm like, oh, I just need to sit down and go through it. And then... I'll be okay. Right. So right. I just took, took a afternoon and it didn't take that long, but I took, you know, about a 30 minute, 45 minutes to go through the spin. And I was like, Oh my gosh, there's so much garbage. In here. <laughs> I just kept in this stress and it was bringing me stress because it was just sitting there yeah. and it was like, Oh, this half an hour, like totally, like I wish I did it sooner because it totally alleviated the stress of like looking at this box of stuff that I'm like, oh, there's so much in there. And it's like, oh, well, I just recycled half of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the funny thing of like why, I, I don't know if anybody's unlocked this in our brains yet, but why we do that? Why do we <laughs> like avoid it? Because it causes so much more problems to just, it compared to just, Going up and just doing it and getting rid of the daggum thing. We, I, don't, I think a lot of it's to do with being overwhelmed. Like there's a lot sure, of yeah. stresses that go on. And uh, I know for me, it's like I look at it and I'm like, I just can't. Like I just can't. I yeah. got too much crap going on. Like I just like, that's not mm-hmm. there for me. But I think kind of breaking that, that down into chunks, like you were saying, mm-hmm. break it down to a chunk, make it manageable. And pull through with it because yeah. dedicate the time to get there and get that something kicked off and do it daily. 
I mean, is it something you should do daily or is it like maybe start out do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or like, what do you think about that? It depends. Um, I'm the type of person that I like to do it daily because I, that will help me with a habit. Like it's mm -hmm. that repetition. Right. Um, some people that's, it's fine. Oh, it's Monday. Sometimes I don't know what day of Monday. <laughs> like I'm like, <laughs> it's a Monday. <laughs> um, so that to me is, is a little bit more I'm like, oh, okay, if I do it every day, then I, I know I'm going to get it done. Right. And I'll probably miss a day or two, but that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. So it really depends on your bandwidth of, and connection with days of the week. Um, and if, if Monday, Wednesday, Friday is more doable then you know, stick a sticky note on your mirror <laughs> where you get ready in the morning or whatever. And, and just have that, Oh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do this. Oh, great. Oh, it's not Monday. Don't have to pay attention. Oh, it's Monday. I need to go do this. Right. So it's, you know, it's, it's giving yourself the tools to, mm -hmm. to be successful. Cause mm -hmm. if you don't, you don't really want it. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it sounds it sounds a little bit harsh there but you, you gotta be honest with yourself about it you know yeah. yeah and then you have to go okay well why why am i avoiding mm -hmm. why am i why am i pushing back on this um then it's okay you know it mm -hmm. you got to work through that and then maybe that working through that will allow you to break through and then make a change so yeah we're our brains are very complex they are they're, they're crazy my <laughs> My brain's crazy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like your analogy of the spaghetti brain. That that's that works. <laughs> yes, spaghetti brain is. I am. I have mastered spaghetti brain, <laughs> and it's hard because it's one of those you're like, you know, or I always also equate it to, like those, you know, CSI or those crime, you know, shows, and they have like the invisible whiteboard, and they're like writing things on it and they're like solving things and it's like sometimes that's how my brain is it's like i can see all the stuff. Yeah. but it's like something triggers it so yeah that's yeah. my i'm organized sometimes a lot in here it's just knowing which, it out which piece of spaghetti it's on right. <laughs> is it al dente spaghetti or is it a real that fire? one no it's not that one it's that one no. <laughs> dang it <laughs> So you offer these services to help people get organized as like a class, right? Yeah, I have. Um, currently, I have. Um, well, on on a freebie side, I do have what I call a Visual Vibe Society on Facebook. And so it is a private group. But if you search Visual Vibe Society, you can find it and join. Um, it's I've been a little quiet in there, but I'm I'm getting back to business uh, and really that is a community to just come together as business owners who want to get visual and visible and learn how to grow their business through that. Great. And um, like I mentioned, I have a theme that I mm -hmm. claim each month mm -hmm. of the year and I talk about. And so that is where I, I kind of insert that. And then I do have a mass monthly mastermind that I have launched and um, I will be uh, kicking that off. We've, we've kind of done it preliminarily, but I'll be kicking it off in January where you can either pay monthly or you can pay for the whole year at once. And it's purely around, it's called visual brand cultivator. So it's cultivating your visual brand. How can you cultivate it, grow it, and very much around organizing what that looks like oh, in yeah. a step-by-step -step basis. So each month will be a specific topic because I just love going that way. Yeah, and yeah. the mastermind will break that down and you'll have tools and resources um, on the membership portal that you can access. And then of course you'll have a group of people that you can connect with, um, that are in the same, on the same path. Yeah. Get that group vibe going. Yeah. <laughs> I like mm -hmm. that. So where can people find out more about your masterclass? 
Yeah. So the best way right now, because I'm still in the process of getting the page up and running is mm -hmm. just to send an, me an email. That's probably the best way. And that's at Amanda at silverkeysmedia.com. Um, just shoot me an email and I'd be happy to um, send that along. Um, of course, you can find me on all the socials. Um, personally, um, I'm under Amanda C. Goff as my personal profile, but you can also find me under at Silver Keys Media. Very good. Awesome. Well, we'll have to get you on the uh, podcast to talk about your masterclass. And yeah. I'm definitely going to join your Facebook group. That sounds amazing. So you remind one more time, visual... Visual Vibe Society. So at Visual Vibe Society. Visual Vibe Society. Let me write that down because <laughs> I know my memory. <laughs> society. And I would love to actually have you on my podcast. I do at least once a month, not sometimes twice a month. And actually in Visual Vibe Society, we go live there first. And then I post everything onto my YouTube channel as well. So I would love that. Um, key conversations with amanda hey i like it <laughs> <laughs> very good well, yes. amanda, thank you so much for joining me and this i think this was great uh, i wanted to keep talking i mean this is great stuff yeah and, yeah i'd love to be on your podcast so we can definitely be kind of bouncing back and forth and um yeah go check out amanda golf on uh facebook instagram all the socials uh, you do some good stuff, and uh, I really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to connect with you and your community. Same. Yes. And we're in the community, th and we're in theater together, and that's not, I know, not right? together, but, you know, like, we, yeah, we're, we're vibing. This is good. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope you got as much out of this as I did. This was a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, join us next time. We'll let you know what's going on. <laughs> Perfect. Bye. Right. Goodbye, everybody.